Hello and welcome all my grade 11 elite students to today's session for end of term questions, exam coverage and answer key for your upcoming math exam. This video is made on the special request of some of my students and subscribers who have asked for the detailed answer key for the exam coverage for grade 11. So here I am with the answer key so i in this video i'm going to provide you the solutions of all the end of term exam questions that are going to come for your final math exam so stay glued till the end of the video like share and subscribe to the channel if you haven't and watch the video till the end so that you benefit from the answer key of today's session so first module that we are going to be looking at and revising is vectors uh, in this one I'm going to show you all the answers of the questions so the first question uh, and the learning objective is to represent and operate with vectors geometrically so here you see um, in blue is the question in red and pink is the solution so I have given you the answer key for questions 13 to 18 here so make sure you practice well then again for question 36 and 37 where you need to write a vector as a linear combination of unit vectors the answer is provided in pink color so you can check your answer for the from this answer key for questions 54 to 58 again the solutions are provided here please note for question 55 56 and 57 these are sample answers so they can be more than one correct answer and in this one you have the learning objective to write a vector as linear combination of unit vectors moving on the next learning objective is to write a vector as linear combination of unit vectors so for question 59 you see in pink the solution for each part of the question in detail Moving on for question 9 to question 14 where you have to express algebraically and operate with vectors in space. The answer key is provided on the right here. You see 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14. So first you have to find the length uh, and then you have to find the midpoint. So we have used distance formula for this question. And here are the answers. You can see it on the right side of the screen. Then moving on, you have cross product of vectors in space and you use the cross product to find the area in volume. So the answers are provided in pink for question 62 to 65. 65 solution is given here. And now we move on to module 2, polar coordinates. Here you have um, a question on graph points with polar coordinates, question 14 to 21. The detailed answer key is provided in pink on the right side. See the margin and get your answers. For question 26 to 35, you have to do the graph on the rectangular equation and then write the equation in polar form. So the answer is given here in the form of the graph. You can use Desmos also for drawing the graph of the polar coordinates. And this is how the graph is going to look like. Question 26, 27, 28 and 29, the solution is here. For question 30 to 35, the graph is here where you convert between polar and rectangular equation followed by the graphing calculator question you can use calculator for this question where 26 to 29 you have to write and graph the polar equation of a conic given its eccentricity and equation of the directrix so here you see the ellipse here you see the hyperbola sorry the parabola here you see the parabola here you see the hyperbola so question 26 to 29 can be done using a graphing calculator and these are the solutions you are going to get for the same moving on you have to match each polar equation with its graph so the matching has been done here for question 30 to 33 and here the learning objective is to write and graph the polar equation of a conic given its eccentricity and equation of the directrix so for question 30 the answer or the graph which is matched is d for 31 it is a for 32 it is b for 33 it is e. moving on we have convert complex numbers from rectangular to polar form and vice versa so for question 10 to question 17 these are the solutions given in pink 
you can match the correct answer and check your answer accordingly. Then we have sigma notation to represent and calculate the sum of series. For question 57 to 62, the solution in terms of the sigma series is given here in pink for your reference. Then we have find the nth term and arithmetic means of arithmetic sequence. So we are moving forward to sequence and series. Here you have to find the specified value a1, D, N and so on. So for question 18 to 25, the solution is given here in the answer key. Then you have 54 to 56 where there are word problems. The solution are given in pink again and you have to find sum of N terms of the arithmetic sequence and series for this question. So the formula that is being used, I have written it here is sum equal to N divided by 2 multiplied with 2A plus N minus 1D where your A1, D and N will be given in the question. Then we have uh, sum of n terms of geometric series and sum of infinite geometric series. So you see here for question 56 to 63, the following solutions given in pink. Some of them do not exist and for some, the value is given to you. Then we have mathematical induction to prove summation formulas and properties of divisibility. These are long questions over so question 13 to 16. I have given here the detailed solution. Go through it and you will get all the answers for your questions on mathematical induction. Next, we have binomial theorem to write and find the coefficient of specified terms in binomial expansion. So for question 11 to question 26, the solution is given here in pink. Please check your solutions and benefit from the answer key. Moving on, the bonus questions. For the bonus questions, any one of the questions written here can come. So I have given you the solutions in pink. And for inferential statistics, you may get a question on constructing probability distribution and calculating its summary statistics. So the uh, questions 20 to 24, uh, we have provided the sample answers here. So you can have a look and you can find the probabilities for normal distribution given the data values using these questions. So the graph is also given, the value is also given. So solutions are in pink for you for the central limit theorem to find probabilities as well. So make benefit from the answer key. Moving on, use the central limit theorem to find the probabilities. So for question 12 to 15, uh, the minimum sample size needed is given to you in pink so that you can get your answers for the normal distribution and normal approximation of binomial distributions for question 7, 8 and 9. Similarly, use the distributions to find confidence intervals for the mean. Question 7 to 12, you are given the solutions in pink so you can benefit from the answer key and match each graph to the corresponding correlation coefficient. So the matching has been done for you in pink and the learning objective that has been met with this question is to measure the linear correlations for set of bivariate data using the correlation coefficient and to determine if the correlations are significant. Next, we have inferential statistics bonus question. Question 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 are the bonus question, the answer for which is provided on your screens in pink. So you can check your answer. And that brings us to the end of today's session. Thank you for watching. I hope you will make use of the answer key for preparing for your exam. Benefit from the same. And if you found the video useful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon so that you don't miss the notification of the upcoming videos. Until then, this is Mr. Chika signing off from today's session. See you in my next video. Bye students.